to uh, Kilo's third video on stand-up paddle buyout mechanics. Um, in this video, we're going to really talk about um, shoulder mechanics. And you know, interestingly, as a physical therapist, the most common injury that we see coming into the clinic in stand-up paddling, it's probably no surprise to anybody, is rotator cuff injuries. Um, stand-up paddling is a relatively new sport, so down the line, I think what we're also going to see is the same thing that we see in other arm generated sports which we'll see arthritis in the shoulder um, because we're still young we're not seeing that so much but we see a lot of rotator cuff injuries <laughs> um, but from a rotator cuff standpoint uh, many of these injuries can be avoided um, and they can be avoided purely by kind of taking the arm and shoulder and putting it into a uh, into a mechanic that 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 really the arm was designed to to do. And so when we think about where I'm taking that top arm on a paddle stroke, if I, if I take and I keep my elbow at or below shoulder height and I keep my hand at or below shoulder height, what we tend to find is that motion draws the shoulder blade or the scapula into the trunk. And the, and the stabilizer of the shoulder with the scapula into that position, they're, they're very able to kind of couple that arm with the body. And so if we keep that elbow and hand at that shoulder height, now the arm moves as a, a full component of the trunk. Um, and, and with the arm moving as a component of the trunk, we are now able to use the large muscles of the trunk, which are much bigger than the smaller muscles of the arm um, for use in paddling. As soon as that elbow comes higher, which we, which we do see as a common mistake in, in, in at least the biomechanical piece of that, we've now, we've now kind of brought that shoulder blade up and out, so it's brought out, and which disconnects the arm from the shoulder. So now, all of a sudden, in order to do the paddle stroke, even if the trunk is moving, the arm has to generate a lot of the power. And as the arm's generating power against the shoulder and using the shoulder as a fulcrum point in there, we also create a lot of wear and tear on the rotator cuff and on the, and on the shoulder joint itself, we also disconnect from those large muscles of the trunk. So we're bleeding out power in, in those scenarios. Um, so we end up with, with a, lot of, a lot of shoulder taking some abuse there, but also some overuse injuries into the arm. Um, the arm muscles really aren't designed to do the repetition of stabilization and power that the trunk does. So, um, so maybe what, let's go ahead and hop up on the board here. And I think Dave, what, let's, start, let's start the paddling mechanic with just a few strokes of really kind of that higher arm position where we're kind of coming in and down. And we can, we can just really see and feel how much that arm is having to do work in there. Um, and really how there's kind of a disconnect between the arm motion and then the trunk motion. And now let's go ahead and stop just for a second and let's kind of bring that hand and elbow there. We can kind of see that the elbow's kind of in a little bit of a bend and that shoulder's just kind of married to the trunk. And now we kind of sit here and we kind of say, boy, that trunk is really kind of generating almost all that power. I'm going to have you just really try to come up a little taller so that, so that we're here. And we can kind of see as, that, as we paddle there, boy, we've got that trunk in the motion, we've got that shoulder in a nice stable position, we decrease that whole wrist factor into that rotator cuff. See, so that looks great, Dave. So what we're going to do, what we'll do is we'll transition in our next video, and we'll really kind of talk a little bit more about kind of what the legs and hips and pelvis are doing um, in relationship to that paddle stroke there, and we'll, we'll just keep moving along in this video.